Hello, I'm Lucy. I'm a fine art beader and I paint with beads. Now, in the last video, I started the creative process for my um, next lockdown art piece using my Genome sewing machine here. And I was mulling over how to do people um, on the canvas in, in a more painterly fashion. My first lockdown piece was very strict and rigid, but this one is going to be more painterly. So I've yet to design the piece itself as a whole and also decide on the name of the piece. But I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a moment. So to the people, the only thing to do was to get down to it and do some experimenting. And my goodness, there were quite a few failures along the way. So I started on a scrap piece of material um, and my first attempts were rather blocky. That one sort of all random. Um, this is just a zigzag stitch, um, but I didn't really think of that much of those. Um, here, although you wouldn't believe it, there's a pad of felt under there because I wanted to make it more 3D, but that's a complete failure. Um, and then if I go down here, I started doing some shading and actually they've got something. It's, it's really quite interesting on there. Um, and for this, this mess really, um, I started sewing onto a piece of soluble material, which I then dissolved and then applied these threads onto this canvas and sewed, sewed it on. So that's why it's all kind of all muzzy and um, all over the place. But, um, you know, maybe in a different context that would work. And then I felt I wasn't getting very far and uh, I, I then even lost confidence that I'd even chosen the right leaves. So I did some leaves and there's another set, set up there. So I thought, oh, is the tree going to work? I don't know. And then I happened upon this one, which is um, this, this particular design. I thought, oh, that's really quite nice. I, I do like that. But it's um, probably for a different piece, I think. And then I used some eyelet eyelets there um, with a straight stitch going through and I thought oh that's really nice as well but to be honest I just needed a break from trying to do people and then I thought aha what if I paint on the material first and sew on top of that so I got out my Secura gel pens they're, they're archival I think so they should last a long time if I were to use them on this and I started painting on the material um, this is a sort of blue um, colour on the background that was orange just to see what the contrast would look like um, again interesting but no, no cigar as I say um, I tried it in, in a very large shape and uh, what you might not be able to tell there is that there is some different colours underneath there's some shading down the, there with using the gel pens um, so I think that gives a really interesting effect it's quite an interesting shape maybe I'd use it elsewhere but it's not for this piece. So at that point I gave up and had lunch. Over lunch I had a few brain waves and decided it was now time to actually sketch out the piece itself. So this is my sketch. I decided to put the tree top left. Now I can't make the leaves on the pattern on the machine any bigger. So um, that meant for me that I needed to put that tree a little bit into the distance. And I thought about the Derek Mahone poem, everything will be all right, and the phrase the sun rises despite everything. So that's what I think I will call it. I felt it would be boring to put um, a sun at the top right and I thought how would it be if I had a sunrise coming from the bottom left and, and somewhere off the canvas and to illustrate that I'd have to develop some long shadows um, since to me this is sunrise but depending on the viewer um, this could mean many different things to different people. So now I have something to aim for um, and it's time to start preparing some materials. So preparing the material, I've washed the material 
and ironed it with a steam iron. Um, it is a Hobbycraft uh, cross stitch fabric. And even though I have ironed it with a steam iron, I still see the crease where the fabric has been folded in the packaging. And that happens whether or not you, you wash the material. You don't, or you don't have to wash the material. Sometimes I do because I know it, it does shrink. So I'm going to add an iron-on stabilizer backing. And that sometimes, not always, but sometimes helps to smooth out that crease that you've got there. So that's what I'm going to do now. And I'm actually going to put on two layers because I find that gives it a whole lot more stability as well. So another tip before you start here is to ensure if you can have an ironing surface or ironing board that is as big as the, the piece of work that you're going to be um, making up here. So fortunately I've got quite a wider ironing board here and I'm just going to cut that across there, give myself a little bit of space. Okay, put that to one side. Now you've got to get it the right way around of course because this is the shiny smooth side of the paper so that's got the glue on it and the other side if you want to put glue down towards the material and you can feel very much um, a more papery surface on this side so you've got it the right way up and you need a really hot iron and you need, need to really work away at it and things will shrink and move you probably can't see that on on here so easily um, but it does kind of shrink and move about and the reason why I said it's best to have a surface where it's as large as the piece that you're ironing it's because you then don't have to move the material around because when you've ironed it on like this and it's going to take a little while, a little bit of doing to get this onto this material because of the texture and the weave. You want to let it cool for a moment before you move it. Otherwise, it will just peel away. It'll be stuck in some parts and not in others. So hopefully that's helped with my first layer of uh, backing. I'll leave that to cool. Now it doesn't take too long I can see there's a bit that's not not attached over there okay we'll try that again hopefully that'll work and just leave it for a moment or two so the second piece to go on top there measure it out again cut it out you don't have to be too particular let's do that all the way up Turn it the right way up. Hot iron and then work away at it. Try not to pull it about too much. Kind of working from the centre out. Find some bits lift up. And the bits settled down. And keep going. So you have quite a thick piece of material but fairly stable for machine embroidery. Some people use steam for attaching this and I have experimented. It doesn't quite work so well for me. It seems that the material then continues to shrink and twist and it pulls itself off. It's all of writhes around like a bit of an animal on the ironing board um, and you hear all these cracks and groans from the material pulling itself away from from the backing so that looks like that's okay oh i see a little lump there let's go for that try and get that out there requires a fair bit of effort to get this right a fair bit of effort 
Now I have another piece of material which I prepared in the same way and I feel much happier about it because it doesn't quite have the same crease going down the middle. Okay, and I'm wanting to put my, my artwork in the centre here so I don't want a, a line going all the way through it. Um, and that one seems to work just fine. I've got a few little creases down here um, and you've just got to find the right right opportunity for this. I'm going to do this one again because I've been moving it about rather for the camera. Um, and you'll find you might need to re-attach um, your material uh, from time to time if you do a lot of work like this. Okay. So I took the prepared material, the one with the crease down it, to be my test piece for, for form and for colour. I felt tracing the outlines of the people several times, over and over, uh, might do it. And then with a little bit of shading. Um, the people are all freehand on the sewing machine and I'll show you how to, to create them in the next video. I noticed I'd made everything bigger than either my sketch or, or my test piece of the, of the tree. So I'm going to have to look out for, for proportions on, on all of that going forwards. If, if it's going to work, that is. So I'm happy with the colours of the people and the shadows, um, but I'm not so happy with the pink and the yellow on, in the tree. I, I thought I would experiment with something brighter, but actually I, I like the original more muted colours um, of the original down this left hand side. So I think I'll go back to the mustard and pink colours. So now we have a name, a design, a context, some uh, techniques that we're going to use, the colours that we're going to use, and the material is prepared. So if you've enjoyed this, please subscribe, share and like. Um, next time I'm going to sh show you how to actually create all the pieces and do the sewing, um, and that will be in the next video. So see you next time. I'm Lucy, I'm a fine art beader, and I paint with beads.